In this Kotlin on Android Totoro, we're going to be downloading and displaying an image using Android's own HTTP URL connection API. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, all the previous tutorials we've actually been using third-party uh, third-party APIs, and we've been installing them with the Gradle build file. With this one, you don't need to do that. It already comes available in the Android operating system for use, and it's called the HTTP URL Connection API. So I'm going to introduce you to that, and we're going to download an image using that. Okay, just as an intro to this tutorial, uh, this tutorial is based on the original tutorial, which is the Picasso tutorial. There will be a link in there for that. Um, to get that code, if you just want to start this tutorial straight off, just to get the initial code, it is supplied here in GitHub. And down here, if you are signed up to the professional plan, you also get a video demonstrating how to get the code to start this tutorial. Okay, so we will make a start. And I should also mention this document, documentation is available on the website if you sign up for the free YouTube membership. Um, all the details are in the description of the YouTube video. Okay, we'll make a start. We'll go to our Android Studio. Right, here's the here's the code here, the initial code here. First thing I'm going to do is just, I don't need to install anything, or it comes installed, so I'm just going to create a, a new function to download the code. Okay, so we'll make a private function, and we'll call it load image oops, using HTTP URL connection. Okay, we need one. We to start off with the values. We need a value representing the URL. And to get that, we will call our URL object, and then just call our image string, image URL. Okay, and it's going to be the Java.NET URL library we want to use, not the database one. Okay, the next step here is to create a URL connection variable. I'm just going to call this URL connection. We call our URL um, open connection, and we do need to cast that as an HTTP URL connection. Okay, just so we can get the extra functionality of the actual URL connection, especially when we're disconnecting it. Okay, so next step here is we need to get the input stream. So I'll call value, create another value to represent the input stream just before we load that into our bitmap. And to get that, it's going to be a matter of calling our URL connection. Actually, we're going to set up a buffered input just to a buffered input stream just to load this into a buffer, and then we can call our URL connection and input stream. Okay, I'm just going to press help on here just to see. What happens? So it does provide an input stream from the socket connection, but the thing I'm interested in, if something goes wrong while creating an input stream, it will throw an I/O exception. And so in Kotlin, we do need to catch that. So I'm going to set up a try catch finally, and the exception will be an I/O exception. And finally. Uh, I do want to close our connection. Disconnect it. Okay. So once we've got our input stream, we can then use that to create our bitmap. So I'm going to create a value here called bitmap. And we'll use a bitmap factory to 
decode the input stream and we just pass in the input stream. Okay, and then it's just a matter of calling out uh, image view, set image bitmap with the bitmap. And we better stop the chronometer as well if you've been following this series. So a little time that starts when we first start downloading the image. Okay, and just let me just print out the stack trace if something does go wrong in the IO exception. Right, okay, those should be the only changes we need to make there. We do need to call this from inside our button listener. Okay, and I believe that's all the changes that need to happen, so we'll run this and see if we can download and display the image. Application is now started, so I'm going to press the download button. That's not good. Okay, so it crashed. Um, it failed spectacularly. Let's see what happened. So let me open up the log cat here. Okay, I've got a fatal exception. Yeah. Um, okay, the thing I'm interested in here is this Android OS network main thread exception. So I'm going to copy that. Let's go into our. Let's do. Let's Google that. So no, open up a new window. Uh, just do Android. Um, down here we've got the actual Google developers site, so I'm going to open up that. And it says the exception is thrown when an application attempts to perform a networking operation on its main thread. And we were with HTTP URL connection. We were doing a network operation on the main thread so it's not it doesn't like that so it's throwing us out with the network on main exception and i should definitely not be laughing this is very serious okay so it's targeting um honeycomb sdk a little later if we try and do a network call on our main thread it's going to crash and this is what you're going to see so we need to get around that so if we go back to android studio what we're going to do here is we're going to add Kotlin provides us with a coroutine where we can actually run this call on a background thread so we're not going to affect the uh, performance of the main UI thread whose job is to pu push out the data to the screen basically um, display all your views to the screen okay so what we're going to do is add a what's called an Anko coroutine. It's, it's quite new, but it's also built by the developers of Android Studio and of Kotlin. So I think it's pretty good. So let me just go to my website here again. And if we scroll on down here, I provide the steps on how to install the Anko coroutine. So I'm just going to copy this line here. You will need to add in your top level build.gradle file, you will need to add the Anko version there, but I'm going to do that right now. So go back into Android Studio, um, top level build grade file there. Um, under Kotlin version, we'll add a new one called Anko underscore version equals, and this is. 0.10.3 at publication of this video and we also need to go into our module build.grader file and add the actual uh, library itself so I can paste that in there and we do need to sync to pull down and install that library to our project that's now completed so we'll go back into our main activity Right, what I'm going to do is modify this code here. And so this code here is the code we're going to use to download the image. It's going to happen on a background thread. So we're not going to be doing any um, thing operations you'd expect to happen on the main UI thread. So we're not going to be setting an image 
bitmap to the image view, or calling the chronometer, which is also a, a view that is uh, run on the main UI thread. So we'll de delete those two first. And bitmap, I'm just going to create above here. So I'm going to have this function actually return a bitmap. And I'll put the question mark there. It's basically this value can also safely hold the null value. It's a way of getting it around. It's a way of allowing Android just to work okay with Kotlin. Okay, so we're going to have to create a new va a variable here. It's going to be writable. A variable called bitmap. It's going to be off the type bitmap. And put the question mark there because we are going to assign a default value of null. And at the very bottom underneath here, we will return that value uh, bitmap. Right, so the next step is to create our um, background thread, a, a function that's going to operate on a, a background thread to call this function, which will do the downloading of the image. So I'm just going to create a new function here, make it private function, and I'm just going to call this download background. Now what I'm going to do here is create a new value. I'm going to call it a weak reference. So basically, I will. Once I've finished the slide of code, I'll explain a little bit more detail what I'm doing here. We'll call reference, and it's going to take the main activity. And it's going to be the ANCO coroutines experimental. It's still very new, this. And we'll initialize it with this dot as reference here. So basically, when we create our variables, they have strong references to them. They have strong reference to the activity. Because this is going to be running in a background activity, if our main application shuts down, we could lose memory. We could have what's called memory loss that will not be picked up by the garbage collector. So what we do is we provide a loose reference, which allows us to release this back to the garbage collector just to clean up any um, memory. Or else you'll have what's called a memory leak and your phone's just going to lose memory and not ever have access to it, slow down and die basically. Okay, so we've got a re weak reference here, um, which is what we're going to use to access our view after the bitmap becomes available. Right, now we're going to actually set up the uh, coroutine itself, so I'm going to call async and pass in the UI representing UI context. And then put in some braces at the end there. Okay, you'll notice that the light is asking us to choose a library. It's going to be experimental, the Kotlin coroutine experimental. It's still bleeding edge, this stuff. So we'll select that experimental. And again, the same thing for async. Okay, now that we're inside there, we're just going to set up a variable just to get the data returned from the background thread. So we'll set up a value there, data, and it's going to be of the type deferred, and the actual deferred of future is going to take the type bitmap, and the question mark representing it supports nullable types, because this is what's returned from the load image using HTTP URL connection, a nullable supported um, type of bitmap. Okay, and then it's a matter of getting the data returned from BG for background there. So then we can actually now load the image using URL. So we can call that now. And basically, this is going to happen on a background thread, the load HTTP image. That's all happening on a background thread. Once that completes, it's going to return the bitmap here to this uh, future object, and we're assigning it into the type of data. OK, so now we, what we do is I'm going to create a value here called bitmap. And we call the data and a weight. So basically, once it's completed running the data on the background task, 
this data await will then get called and we can get our bitmap there. Now we need to check that that bitmap is not null and then and then we can assign it to our image view. So if map Okay, and then we can assign it to our image view. Remember, where we've set up the um, main activity object as a weak reference, so we have do have to call that weak reference. Don't forget to do that. And now we can call our actually we'll have to call the weak reference object there, and therefore we can load our image view. Image bitmap with the bitmap, and we'll also do the same for chronometer because we need to stop that as well. So call the chronometer object and stop. Okay, that should be all the code in place. So we'll run that and see if we can download and display the image. Right, the application's now started. I'm just going to press the download button and wait to see if that downloads. And it does display. And that completes the HTTP URL connection tutorial where we download and display a image using HTTP URL connection. The big, the big thing we can take note of here is that when you're doing network activity, downloading images, that does need to happen on a background thread. So that gave me the opportunity to introduce you to the Anko coroutines and showing you how we can use a coroutine, how we can set up weak references and run background code in a background thread. Okay, so that completes this tutorial. If you want to, do want to get notified of these YouTube tutorials, don't forget to click on that subscribe button, which will send you notifications every time I publicize a video on YouTube. Um, I'm too busy to actually respond to any technical questions on YouTube itself. If you, if you do have specific questions and you're willing to pay for it, you can contact me on Code Mentor. There will be a link in the description. Or if you've got small projects that you want me to help you on, you can contact me on my website contact uh, page. And I'll leave a link to that description as well. And thank you for taking the time for watching this one. Bye for now.